think Stalin, Mao, Hitler, Pol Pot, they didn't get there overnight. The coalition's outrage merchant at it again. The totalitarian path, the path that we are unquestionably on, has never ended well. His latest target, state premiers. The solution is a rediscovery of human dignity along with, and I don't say this lightly, civil disobedience. Standing in the parliament that makes laws, George Christensen called on voters to break them in protest against vaccine mandates and what he sees as state overreach. Will the Prime Minister unequivocally and without reservation condemn this call. Every single person should obey the law and no one should encourage anyone to disobey the law. Scott Morrison wouldn't name Mr Christensen. Instead, he deflected with a four-year-old quote from a union leader. This is a quote from Sally McManus, Mr Speaker. The Prime Minister will resume his seat. I believe in the rule of law when the law is fair and the law is right. But when it's unjust, I don't think there's a problem with breaking it. But the Prime Minister has a big problem. Vaccine mandates without reasonable exemptions are not only unconscionable, they are criminal. Divisions over vaccine mandates are deepening in the House and Senate, where a band of rebel backbenchers is threatening to derail their own government's agenda over the issue. Why has the Prime Minister allowed himself to become hostage to a senator who boasts he's unvaccinated? A reference to Jared Rennick, who's claiming credit for changes the government's made to a compensation scheme for people who suffer adverse reactions to a COVID-19 vaccine. The government has been considering for some weeks now uh, improvements. It's been a messy scheme. week for the coalition. Divisions are on display and internally frustrations are growing that this backbench standoff is paralysing the government's agenda. The Prime Minister has warned MPs disunity could cost them the next election. But for now, the rebels aren't backing down. Jane Norman, ABC News, Canberra.